Now today, friends, I come to the 49th Psalm. Now this psalm actually concludes this first segment of psalms that began with the Exodus section of the book of Psalms, Psalm 42 now through Psalm 49. As we said when we began, these all belong together. We have here a wonderful, as it were, vindication of the ways of God in connection with the wicked and with the righteous. And we have seen how he leads his people that are away from him out of the land and how he intends to bring them in, even keep them during the time of great trouble, just as he brought his own out of the land of Egypt when they were under a dictator down there. This has been a very wonderful section. Now, when we come to this psalm here, it again, may I say, is a very remarkable psalm. And it's a psalm that is designed to contrast the ways of God in connection with the wicked and the righteous. And it is a psalm that doesn't exactly philosophize about the uncertainty of riches and the shortness of life and all that sort of thing. But it does give to us a great message. It's not just a little sweet dissertation which bids us bear bravely our perils and our sufferings, telling us that virtue is its own reward and will triumph at the end. That's not the thought here at all. It shows us that not only the vanity of riches, but the end of those who boast themselves in riches. And this psalm may sound to you to be a little revolutionary, according to the thinking of today, but I think it's one that should be considered, especially in this hour. Now, let me read these first four verses, and I'll put them together. He says, "'Hear ye this, all ye peoples. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the age, both low and high, rich and poor alike. My mouth speaketh wisdom, and the meditation of my heart is understanding. I will incline mine ear to a parable. I'll open my riddle upon the heart. Now, what he's going to do here, and actually in the next psalm also, he issues a call to his creatures to hear. We're going to see that again when we come to the first chapter of Isaiah. We've already had it back in the book of Deuteronomy. You will recall back there that when the Lord was ready to put these people in the land, why, he called heaven and earth to witness that he was putting them in the land, and not only putting them there in the land, but the conditions on which they went into the land. And he gave it to them then in the form of a song, in Deuteronomy 32, again, you have a song of Moses, and it says, "'Give ear, O ye heavens, and I'll speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth.'" And God calls heaven and earth to witness the condition on which he's putting them in the land. Then you move down quite a few years later. In fact, the matter is, you're going to move down at least 800 years later why God is ready to put them out of the land. And in Isaiah, he says, I want you to hear, heaven and earth, that the thing I'm doing is just and righteous. And he did that when he put them out. 